Now, if you pay close attention to the question or the situation, especially on your exam, pay very close attention, especially in the math problems, to the wording. That's usually the most difficult part of these math questions that you see on your real estate exams, is the wording. As long as you get past that, you read through it carefully, these questions really aren't that bad once you know what to do with these numbers. But what you do want to catch here is we're just dealing with the sale price. Now, the loan origination fee is not charged on the sale price. Remember, the, the product that we sell as real estate professionals is the house, it is the real estate. So we charge our fee based off of the sale price, but the lender, their product, the mortgage broker, the mortgage loan originator, the lender, whatever way you want to look at it, their product isn't the real estate, their product is the financing to pay for this real estate. So their origination fee of 1% is not going to be based on this $300,000. It's going to be based on the loan amount. Now, we're not specifically given the loan amount in this situation here, but we do have the components we could use to find the loan amount. And as we go through this information here, a lot of times you're going to have information that's irrelevant. You're always going to have when If this was a real world scenario, you wouldn't need to know what the APR is in this case here. And the, the loan amount is probably already calculated for you. Matter of fact, all of this is probably already calculated out for you if you're getting a statement from a lender. But if you're trying to do some math quickly to get an idea of how much this might cost you or how much it might cost your clients if you know that this is kind of, you know, like the going rate or anything like that, you could do this quick math. But especially on your exam, if you're given this information of the APR for this type of question, you don't need the APR for this question. The APR, the annual percentage rate, basically your interest rate, we don't need that to solve this. But what we do need are these other three pieces of information. The first thing it is that we're going to do is take that sale price of $300,000 and figure out our loan amount. And we do that by multiplying it by the loan to value ratio. And our loan to value ratio is 80%. And what that loan to value ratio basically means is that 80% of the purchase price of the home, of the property, whatever property it is that we're dealing here, not specifically just a residential property, but whatever that loan to value ratio is, in this case, 80%. So 80% of that $300,000 is paid for by the financing, which would mean that the remaining 20%, because 100 minus 80% leaves us with 20%, that remaining 20% would be our down payment that we're paying towards the particular property. We don't really care about the down payment in this case here. We're trying to find the loan amount. So when we do some quick math on this, it should, I think it's what, 340,000 or $240,000 is what we might come up with here. Let's double check that on our handy calculator because you can use your calculator on your real estate exams as well as in the real world. But yeah, $240,000 is our loan amount. which would mean $60,000, that remaining amount, we would get $240,000 in a loan and that remaining $60,000 would be the down payment in this situation with an 80% loan to value. And there's a lot of other different loan to values out there in the real world as well, um, all the way up to a 100% loan to value. Uh, the VA loan specifically is one where that allows uh, veterans to take out a loan that's 100% loan. Um, and they charge a funding fee, which actually gets calculated the same way this origination fee gets calculated. Uh, and really, this funding fee is for funding the VA program, which allows for the origination of the loan. So it kind of all is the same anyways. But back to our situation here of trying to find out what this loan origination fee is. We've got this 1% here. So this 1% is our origination fee. So all we're going to do now is just take 1%, 0 0.01 is a decimal of $240,000. And we're going to end up with, what is that, $2,400? I think that is right. Yeah, $2,400 is our origination fee. So again, that would be an upfront charge to the, the buyer. And don't get confused because uh, charge starts with a C. Charge is not a credit. Credit is when you're being paid money. When you're, when you're having to pay money, when you're paying money out, as a buyer paying this loan origination fee on your closing statement, this is going to show up as a debit to the buyer. Debit meaning you're having to pay. Think of like a debit card. When you use a debit card, that deducts money automatically right away from your bank account. Um, and that's essentially what's happening here. Same rules as normal accounting when you're talking about debits and credits. Same thing happens on your closing statement. That's where they actually uh, use these whole debits and credit systems, where they actually come from when you see them on closing statements. But that's our loan origination fee.